Good morning. All right, so in episode two, we left off at Foreign Gap. And that's where we are now on this cold morning. Except this time, we are now in the middle of a through hike. We're going to continue making our way east. And so far, the through hike's going well. My ankle's holding up good. Foreign Gap begins the start of section four. And it got its name because. Just down that road, when it makes a turn as you're heading towards Mina, like literally like a mile away, there used to stand the foreign family's boarding house. And this highway here behind me is basically like, I don't know the exact dates and I couldn't find anything, but I'm guessing late 1800s to early 1900s is where they used to drive cattle through on their way up to Fort Smith. Whew. So the foreigns had a boarding house set up and they charged a toll because this was their land for every head of cattle and every wagon that came through here. And in their little place there, they had some dipping tanks and pens for the cattle to be held. And uh, the dipping tanks were so they could get the ticks and the fleas and stuff like that off of the cattle before getting up to Fort Smith so that way they could get more, more money for the cattle because they weren't infested with bugs. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> and then the government was also trying to get their cattle up to Fort Smith. And they uh, said, let me get this car go by the truck. So they said, hell no, we're not paying that toll. So they started sneaking their cattle around through Turner Gap, the same one that we hiked through on this trail. So just a little bit of history info there. This is Foreign Gap Shelter, and it's about a mile away from the trailhead, and it's a little bit of an uphill walk, but not too bad. It's old road trace is what you're walking on. From this point, you're going to want to use water sparingly because it's, um, well, you have Tannehill Spring in about six miles. And then when you get to Turner Gap, if it's a wet season, when you go down that road, after you get to the road crossing, it's a dirt road, walk down the road and you'll get to a creek that should be flowing. So those are two places that you can get water in the infamous dry section. And... Foreign Gap Shelter has a beautiful view. But if the wind is blowing from the north, it's going to be cold. We've been hiking up the old road trace for quite a while. And it's a gentle road grade. It's still a used road by Forest Service. But as you can see on this side of me, it's all downhill. We're up on a ridge and back here. We are also up on ridge. A lot of this part of the section runs up on this ridge. So there was a place where at one time it went down towards like Lori Creek. Not know why they rerouted it, but it was a big old long downhill and then a big old long uphill right back up to here. And they ended up rerouting it so that it was just a straight shot. So because they've routed away from that water, and if it's not the rainy season, you're not going to find much for water up here at all. And that's why this is known as the dry stretch. For that reason, this section is definitely not recommended in the summer. Right now, the road looks good because it's Forest Service maintained. But once we get back on trail, it can really get overgrown with briars. So that's another reason because... It's all volunteers that maintain this trail. So a lot of times in the summer, we're not out here working. We don't come back out and start working our sections until after the really hot part of the summer is done. Usually like late September is probably the earliest you'll see us out here starting to work again. Sometimes the briars get so bad it's impassable. And it sure is pretty views up here both sides. 
we've come to a little road trace here. This is pretty cool. We've been on the trail back here, and now we're coming up on this little road trace that goes back over yonder. It heads up this way, and we follow the road for about one-tenth of a mile. This is at 74.1, and at 74.2, we're going to get off the road to the right. The reason I said this road is cool is because this was the first highway through this area. It was for wagons. And we're gonna follow this old wagon road up the way till we get back on the trail. But if you were to stay on this road, it would take you to Tannehill Spring. There used to be a house there and this spring was their only source of water. Okay, so we have come up to the turnoff for Tannehill Spring. So if you want to go to the spring, you go up there and continue following the wagon road. If you want to go on the trail, you come this way, go towards the blue blazes. Oh, and there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. If you don't feel like walking the, I think it's about 0.3 mile up the wagon road to the spring, you can go this way and about 0.3 mile further, you're gonna find some water crossing the trail. That water comes from Tannehill Spring. And I have been through here before and also talked to other people who've been through here when it's been fairly dry out and they still find water. All right, we are here at 74.5. And this, you can see all the rocks up here and everything. This is the water that's coming down from Tannehill Spring. And it comes down into this nice big pool. Now I was mentioning it had been a while since it rained last time I came through here. So there was not this much water in there. Um, you would have needed a, like, you would have needed some kind of a uh, scooper to pick it out. We've been hiking down all this higher elevation scrubby stuff. And it's all scrubby, scrubby, scrubby. And then all of a sudden right here, there's just a line and pine trees start growing. Here's a handy dandy tip for you. I've just come down to the sign for Turner Gap Shelter, right there. With the arrow pointing to go that way. And you see those white blazes on the trees? Well, those blazes take you all the way down. And it's a long little walk down and it goes up and over all kinds of stuff. And sometimes it can be hard to follow if it's a little bit overgrown. But I'm gonna show you a cool trick. Back to the shelter sign, walk past it. Keep going that way, even if you're going to the shelter. I'm gonna show you how to get there. Keep going this way, down the trail. And then it's not even a five minute walk to the dirt road. And it's a very obvious dirt road. So we'll touch bases when I get there. Okay, here we are. The dirt road. And I think I walked for like two, maybe three minutes. So the Washita Trail crosses the road and goes down that way. But we are going to turn right and walk down the road. So see up there, that's this, what you would have been hiking down to the shelter, but we're just gonna walk down the road to the shelter. So this road, as you can see, it's very puddly. It's uh, kind of rough, so they recommend at least four-wheel drive high clearance vehicles for this. Let me go around this way. So we recently had rains, and that's a big old mud puddle. So that's the road I just came down there. But over there, I can see the roof to the shelter. So just walk right over there, come off the road, turn, walk right down there over the hill. And there's like some little road trace right there from the road where they built it. But yeah, there's the shelter 
right there. So that way it saves you from all that zigzaggy crazy stuff that comes down here. Boom, shelter. But what I'm doing is I'm gonna continue walking down this road because I'm going to Turner Creek and I'm gonna get some water. All right, we are coming up on FS76. So this is a very common place to leave caches. And you see there's some empty bottles here. I'm hoping whoever left them is planning to come back and get them. So if you leave yourself a cache, have bottles that you can compress down and hang off your pack or put in your pack. Or have a plan to come back and get them. Please don't leave empties laying there. Let's head on up to the road. All right, so we're at the road. This is FS Forest Service Road 76A. And during the summer months and the hotter times, or when it's real dry, the trail angels will leave water caches here, but you can't always depend on those. So, um, and like I said earlier, it's really not recommended to do this hike and do this section when it's really dry out because water sources are sparse. And sometimes you could even cache water and find out it was gone. In fact, that happened on this trip with some other guys I cached water for. They got there and it was gone. All right, time to hike on. Here is the beautiful Big Brushy, or Brushy Creek, and we are at the Big Brushy Recreation Area. But I just wanted to remind everybody, as I've said I think a couple times through this, after Foreign Gap, your only reliable water source, and even Tannehill Spring isn't completely reliable, we've seen it dry up in droughts. But then this right here is going to be your next reliable water source, so that's again why we say don't do it in the summer and plus I mean there's ticks everywhere mosquitoes and snakes and I mean nature just really doesn't want people there <laughs> okay so the bridge is down that way we just came off it and we're now walking along the brushy creek and also I will tell you that at this time of this video Camping is still not allowed at Brushy Creek. I don't know if there are plans to start allowing camping again, but as of right now, there's no camping here. When we came off the trail, it put us onto a road walk. Now, instead of turning left to follow the OT markers, if you turn right, there is dispersed camping in that area. And I meant to get on this video and say that while I was there. And guess what? I forgot. So we keep walking down this road. And as you get down this road, you'll see a lovely feature. There are some pit toilets up there. I don't know if you can see in the distance. Boop, over there. And trash cans. Oh, we know how a backpacker loves trash cans. So you can dump your trash here right down in the trash can. So like you've got the trash cans here and you scroll here, right down there is your access to the water. So you can filter some more. Okay, so after the bridge, walk straight and you're gonna look to your right for a marker. It'll be an arrow that tells you to go that way. Anyway, so we are leaving Big Brushy. We are also leaving Section 4 behind and starting Section 5. Yay! And Section 5 goes all the way until Highway 27, and that's where it ends. All right, so here is Fiddler Creek Shelter. And just like every other shelter, it's got a fire pit, tables, you have a shelter sign. And it's right off the trail, like literally, that's the trail. My finger, there it is. That's the trail, it goes doo -doo 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 -doo, straight down here. I'm a hammocker, and I could not find hardly any trees to hang from. We ended up finding another campsite, and let me show you where it is. 
you're going to continue down the Washita Trail. And y'all, this right here is steep. So, watch your footing. And I'm going to put this thing down really quick so I can watch my footing. Alright, so there's where the OT comes down. This is the trail. You do need to come down here to get your water out of Fiddler Creek. And I was talking about how steep that was. Seriously, you might want to take a hiking pole with you if you come down here. Because it would be really easy to slip and bust your ass coming down that. When you walk down this road, this is a really nice spot. It's got a big fire ring and someone even left a bunch of firewood. And then excuse all of our stuff, we're getting ready to have dinner. And then you've, we've got two tents pitched over here. This one's an X-Mid Pro. It's kind of pitched like a saggy ball sack. But then we got the regular one-person X-Mid fit into the back there. And then, of course, my hammock set up right there. So this place has good trees for setting up a hammock. So if you're in the hammock, the shelter probably won't work too well. This does. Let's go look at the creek. So I've walked down the roadways and here is an OT marker and there's another one at the end of the bridge. So you do cross and then the trail is going to wind you up that road trace. You're going to be on that road trace for a little while. This water bridge here, it's a low water bridge. So when the water is high, it goes over this bridge. And I've seen pictures of people crossing where in the middle it's waist deep. Here's what I want to show you guys. The bridge is starting to come apart. This is about as high as a street curb. And this whole centerpiece has dropped down. So if you are going to cross, stay to this side. Or <laughs> it'll be shallower because it's going to be deeper over there. And then you keep going. So do be aware, after heavy rains, this can get really ugly. Good morning. Just finished my protein bar as I walk. That's my breakfast. But dude, check this out. I have been hiking into the sunrise. I sure hope the video is catching how vibrant these, put, these uh, colors are. <sighs> that is so beautiful. Well, I have just finished climbing Rock Row Mountain. It's kind of a tall mountain, so you'll get up on it and you'll go up and down for a bit before you start heading back down. But this mountain is called Rock Row Mountain. And it's named this way because of a row of rocks at the top. And I might be a terrible YouTuber and didn't film the row of rocks because I started climbing this and it was still dark. I got an early start. I think I might have already passed it by. Hey, I guess I didn't miss it or I've found more of it. But here is the row of rocks that makes this Rock Row Mountain. So you can see them over there. And then right over here. And it's a very defined row of rocks. Like back that way over there, it almost looks like a rock path because it's so narrow. So this is why we call this Rock Row Mountain. Is that row of rocks right there? Still walking along this rock row. It's quite long. It's really cool looking. I like what you can see in rocks at the top of a mountain because it's kind of like looking at the mountain skeleton, seeing what's inside it. So I've been on a road walk for a little while and I've got to this bridge. This is Rainy Creek. Now if you have one more ahead, which is Harris Creek, since it's really wet out and we've had rains, I'm going to go ahead and skip this one and get water at Harris Creek. 
And then we start climbing Suck Mountain. Oh, so sucky. Pay attention after you cross this bridge because the trail is gonna duck back into the woods. But by this point, I'm sure you're used to seeing that because we've been doing a lot of being in the woods and being on the road and being on the woods and being on the road. Okay, I am now here at Harris Creek and you can see the water runs under the road. So I just got my water here and this is the definitely a good place to get water because this is the last reliable water source until Story Creek. So, and Story Creek is fed by a spring. It's a Shelby spring or Shelby. I don't know, I've asked various people what's the right way to say it, and every single one of them doesn't know. <laughs> Definitely get your water, and remember if you're staying on Suck Mountain for the night, get enough water to get you through the night at camp and to Story Creek. In the rainy season, you might find more, but if it's been a little bit dry or there hasn't been rains in a while, you may not find any. All right. I see an arrow, so I guess that means we're done with our road walk. Time to get back on trail. Next up, Suck Mountain. All right, as you see, we are on road trace now, no longer trail. So you're gonna take this road trace all the way up to the top of Suck Mountain. Okay, the climb has started. Got my music on. And don't listen to any of that sappy elevator stuff. It'll make you fall asleep coming up here. Metal is always best. All right. Time to embrace the suck. Get it? Because we're climbing Suck Mountain. <laughs> All right. I'm up here at Suck Mountain. This is the shelter. As usual, it's got a picnic table and somebody left their hiking sticks. Oh no. I was kind of thinking about maybe taking them down, but I'd hate for me to take it down that way and turn out somebody else is coming from a different direction looking for them. So I'm just going to leave them because I don't want to interfere. Hi, <sighs> Suck Mountain Shelter. And the beautiful thing about this shelter is it has comfy chairs. Ooh. Now I'm gonna sit in one and have a snack. The skies here are wide open and the stargazing from this shelter is just incredible. There's no lights around and you got these beautiful views around us. Just can't beat it. I don't know if you can hear the wind or not, but this shelter faces just about east. Let's see. Yeah, just about east. So if you have a wind coming from the east, it blows right into that shelter. And if it's cold out also, it can be pretty miserable. This access road that goes up this way, in a pinch, if you need water, there's a wildlife pond up the way, not too terrible far. And it's pretty typical of most wildlife ponds. It's, you know, it's water, but it's not great water. Okay, I'm gonna sit in one of these comfy chairs and have myself a snack. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think I'll take a nap. All right, it's pretty windy and a little chilly, so I'm going to get going. I did have two bars of Verizon 4G up here, and um, that is the first cell service I've had since yesterday when I was up on Blowout Mountain. Fiddler Creek does not have cell service, so... I sat here for a little bit and messaged my husband and got caught up with some friends 
who are meeting me at Story Creek. So I'm going to get on my way because I bet you they brought treats. Eee, I like treats. Here is the Womble Trail cutoff. And then there's an older sign here that says Round Top Trail. And then you got a blue blaze on that tree right there. This trail goes down to meet up eventually way, way down the hill there with the Womble Trail. But we're not going that way. We're going that way. And um, we'll see another place. Uh, it'll be tomorrow where the actual Womble Trail comes up and meets the Washita Trail. But the Womble Trail, don't discount this trail. Boop, 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 boop. It's a really cool trail. Ah! It's Jaws. This is a really cool cave structure. It kind of looks like Jaws coming up out of the water. The cave doesn't go but you know, five feet back, but make sure you get your picture taken with it because it's kind of one of those iconic things on this trail is to get your picture with Jaws. Rawr. Wait, do sharks say rawr? I don't know. They probably go blub blub blub. All right, so this is Story Creek Shelter. And this is my favorite shelter out of all of them. It's just in a beautiful setting and it kind of is set up. So like you got hill over here, then hill over the uh, kind of a little area right there that still blocks wind. And you're sheltered with this area over here too. And you also have Story Creek, which runs right by this shelter. There it is. There's my little hammock set up. And then the shelter is like any of the others with a fire pit, picnic table, some areas to set stuff on the thing here. There's some places to put tents over here. And then outside of the area, there's all these trees over there, it's a nice place to put a hammock if you're into that. Or you can set up sleeping inside so that we don't have to mess around with a tent in the morning. And then there's also smiling, happy backpackers. So this is a great site. I really, really love this one. But tomorrow we have a five and a half, no, 5.1 mile hike out. And then once you're out of there, you are done with section five. Remember yesterday when we were at the Round Top Trail Junction and I had mentioned we were gonna cross the Womble Trail access again where the actual Womble Trail meets up with the OT. So this is it right here. So you got Womble Trail goes that way, Washita Trail goes this way. And this down here, it's some switchbacky stuff but again, I mean, the Womble Trail is just an absolutely beautiful trail, so don't discount it. It does take some, a little bit of caching in the drier seasons, but it, it really is worth it. And at some point, I am gonna get a video done about that trail. This one here, you can call Lori at the Bluebell. And if you look in the description at the bottom of this video, you'll see a whole list of all the people who shuttle and Lori and her phone number are there. Uh, for this one, if you decide on your own that you wanna park here, be aware that this, uh, so you see the highway out there and it has this road that comes in, this little like driveway before you get to this big old parking area. So don't come through here expecting that you can see the parking area from the highway because you're not gonna see it. All you're gonna see is the start of this little drive up. For Highway 27, you trailhead, you have Lori at the Bluebell who is about four miles away. And Lori is a trail angel and she's one of the original trail angels for this trail. 
and she's been doing this a long time, taking care of the hikers. She's just awesome. She'll shuttle you, give her a call ahead of time, and there is cell service at this trailhead now. So you can give her a call, she'll come up and take care of you and take you back to the Bluebell. You can mail your resupplies there. And if you're coming through and you just want your resupply box and you don't want to deal with going all the way down there, she'll even bring you a burger with your resupply box if you ask for it.